giornata pazzesca pazzesca Buon anno, Happy New Year, I'm back. I'm sorry, I have really been struggling. I've started this video so many times, I've made it in so many different places and then just had to scrap it and, 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 uh, and leave everything and, and either breastfeed or just crash into bed. I have been quite sick. Nothing serious, but you know, there's just that cold that was going around and my throat, I couldn't swallow, my nose was streaming, my eyes were streaming. Uh, then Gianfranco got sick as well. Uh, and it's been a lot. It's officially three months now that I have, oh, well, Gianfranco is three months old and I've been breastfeeding and sleeping probably, I don't know, two hours a night for three months. So you can probably see it in my face. Let's put on some cream so that I can feel a little bit more hydrated. Um, however, I uh, I really wanted to. I I know it's it's you can't do everything, and you have to take a a pause and and just uh, do go as slow as you as you as your body needs to go. Uh, but I just felt so depleted and then I also felt very anxious because I was opening all these beautiful packages that you sent me, handwritten letters and wonderful thoughtful gifts for us uh, and Gianfranco for Christmas and I, some of them came a bit later but I'm, some of them are, are beautiful objects for Christmas but don't worry I am so excited about using them next year and I'm so grateful uh, but I just I kept thinking about all these you know all of you and, and uh, your support and I just I missed you I missed being in contact with you and being able to thank you and, and being able to have our little chats uh, so Yes, thank you for waiting. I'm going to try and do a little Q and A today. Uh, up until now, it's just it's just felt impossible. I I think also because everyone else got sick as well. That uh, my my parents, my sister, my uh, Guido, and uh, so it's been a little little bit challenging. But I'm sure sure many of you uh, can commiserate. I'm sure there seems to be so many different viruses going around at the moment, at least in the north and hemisphere where it's winter. Uh, but I think we can we can uh, get through this morning if I if I can if I can just wake up, Kylie. Come on, wake up. As you know, I'm not uh, drinking coffee. I haven't drunk coffee since I conceived John Franco. So uh, this is uh, my only way of waking up, I just try and have a cold shower and I get outside, it's been lovely weather in Tuscany uh, and yeah, I, I'll i see how I go, I don't know if this video will get finished filming today um, because I can't, I'm not coherent, I can't <laughs> construct full sentences, uh, bear with me, Let's let's try. Ah, it's one of those perfect afternoons where it's just so calm and warm. It's so peaceful at this time of day. Uh, everyone's having una penichella, a little nap. And uh, I just thought I'd come and have a chat to you and answer some of those, those questions you sent me for the Q&A because, as I said, I received over 600 and uh, I did the q and I only answered uh, a handful of them. So let's let's have a chat and uh, and I'll try and address some of the other topics that you uh, were curious about, speaking about travel, about mental and emotional health, about my marriage, about 
uh, about what else? Uh, about renting out the farm, about uh, our new chapter into being, uh, being, being, being parents and having a, having a newborn baby. And uh, let me just change the angle of the camera so that I can see if I'm in focus. <laughs> Understandably, so many of you have been asking what is happening with the chicken coop. Bella domanda, good question. The chicken coop, yes, we are still uh, going ahead with that, although... Okay, let's go over to the, to the polaio. So yes, the chicken coop uh, project is still going ahead. I don't blame you for thinking it's not, because we have been waiting for so long. Uh, the war in Ukraine, uh, the tax incentives that I've spoken about uh, quite a lot here in Italy that threw the whole building industry into, into disarray and, and chaos, uh, that meant that the materials were delayed by nine, ten months. Uh, so we have just had the bricks uh, arrive. Can you see? Uh, and there they are, uh, and it is still, uh, well, it's still pretty much as, as we left it, um, but we are hoping that the builders uh, will be available to come back, uh, because the builders are the, the ones who were doing the chicken coop are the same ones we got uh, to do the building uh, elements of the uh, pool, and of our bathroom and uh, yeah they just I don't know they, they, they got booked out and uh, even though we started this project over a year ago so what can I say it's a very slow process uh, and uh, here we have the church it's so beautiful um, but uh, the yeah the, the chicken coop I don't think we will rent it out online uh, because we decided it's just too uh, dangerous to put uh, our address online and to have people coming uh, to our home where we live. Uh, we just decided we didn't want that and uh, so we'll, we will probably just rent it out to uh, 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 Italians uh, that we know that, or friends, uh, someone that we know locally. I love your Italian language videos. Your pronunciations are beautiful. Will you do more language videos? videos yes uh, tell me in the comments below what level you're at uh, so that I know uh, whether to make sort of beginner intermediate advanced uh, I, I try to generally in one video cater to all three levels but if you let me know uh, then I can cater specifically to the majority <laughs> a lot of people asking uh, if we ever plan to rent out this main house uh, or the chicken coop when that will be ready uh, we had a think about it and we just don't want to put our main residence online uh, and have guests coming and going just with the, having a child I feel a little bit more uh, protective of his security and unfortunately I don't want to have to vet every single person that comes and stays obviously the majority of you are beautiful wonderful people with whom i would love to sit down and have a cup of tea and some of my freshly baked cake with and hear your stories but i just can't take that risk it's sort of a it, it would be a full-time job and uh we could make a lot of money because so many people have been writing to me and you wouldn't believe saying oh we'd love to rent a place in tuscany uh, but 
basically there is a uh, one particular person who is quite dangerous so dangerous in fact that even this person's family contacted me and told me to be careful uh because that this person is is uh not uh not safe and uh and quite obsessed uh so yeah not to uh get too heavy on you but uh that these thoughts uh just haunt me at night and I get quite anxious and think that I don't know I try I've got to try and find a compromise between doing this work that I love uh and uh and trying to retain a little bit of privacy and and not invite uh or make it too easy for just complete strangers with ill intentions it's a shame when the behavior of a few uh really compromises or hinders the the the, the potential pleasure that uh really beautiful people like you uh could get uh in us sharing this this property and and certainly it would be uh so easy uh however uh we have to sort of think about how to have a compromise and and uh and uh, it's just people say these days that oh you know it's just a negative comment just don't don't uh don't read it but it's it's not uh, it's not just online people uh leave things online and i have proof that it is something that a lot of uh strangers now take into the real world and uh try to have an effect on your life in the real world so yeah it's a shame but uh, it is what it is Oh my goodness, Leslie Cox said, Kylie, do you think that you would ever consider a cookbook with all your delicious recipes? It would be fabulous. And 215 of you liked that question. And then there were so many lovely comments. I just want to thank you so much for your support in the comments for something that doesn't even exist uh, yet. A cookbook, I would love to do a cookbook. As many of you know, uh, it has been almost a lifelong dream uh, to do a cookbook but have it be a narrative cookbook so there are little stories uh, that, uh, you know, interspersed throughout the recipes and lots of beautiful photography obviously. Uh, the, the issue I have is I just don't know how I would have the time to do that and my YouTube channel then what do I do? Do I take a, a sort of eight months off doing YouTube and then I don't know I don't know how to do it. Perhaps I could just reduce do one video a month and then, because it's a lot of work, I would want to do it really well. I test all the recipes and bring you new recipes, not ones that I've already shown you in my videos. So uh, yeah, thank you for your faith in me. I'll, I'll try and think how I can make it work. How are your New Year's resolutions going? Uh, mine are just a complete failure because I was so sick, so I couldn't even, I've struggled to even sit up, let alone uh, get into a rigorous exercise regime but I'm feeling good now and I can't wait I, I have to say I just so missed running I haven't started running yet because I just been going for fast walks and walking uphill and carrying John Franco is just really oh my goodness does anyone am I wearing the carrier wrong we've tried adjusting it I've tried different ones I tried the sling but it just hurts my my back and my shoulders so much and it can't there must be other babies that are his weight, so he's not particularly big for his age, so I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Or is it just supposed to hurt? Because it, it doesn't hurt in the beginning, and then after half an hour, it just, oh, you just, even now, I just feel so, oh my gosh, my whole body feels stiff. Uh, so, yeah, I um, have just been doing walks. I should have been doing yoga and aerobics and all these things that there are for uh, the fourth trimester but I haven't uh, so I'm looking forward to getting into that if you would like a video uh, if you're trying to motivate yourself and you would like me to share my uh, journey of trying to motivate myself then let me know I could include some lovely healthy recipes I've been eating such delicious healthy food actually so many wonderful every meal I'm trying to nourish John Franco and fill it with uh, lots of nutrient dense uh, uh ingredients and uh yeah i just i just love sweating i think also when you're a little bit anxious as i have been uh about some some issues going on <laughs> in my life uh then uh the just sweating it out is a, a, a remedy it's so it works every time for me it doesn't solve the problem but it certainly it certainly just helps me put things in perspective 
Uh, by the way, someone asked uh, if I've ever had to deal with any, uh, what, what was the wording? If I've any, ever had to deal with feeling down or feeling um, discouraged or uh, I'll put the exact wording up on the screen now so you can read it. But uh, of course I have. I think every every human being has. And uh, one of the things that works for me is to listen to a podcast that is about the bigger issues. It's about um, the, something that concerns our society or the, our, our civilization, humanity, uh, science particularly. I think when I, when I get absorbed in learning, in learning about science, then it actually helps me take my mind off myself. And I think that's the, not to say that sometimes you, we all have things that we have to deal with and we have to confront in our personal lives, but in order to, to, to just ease the anxiety and 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 put and contextualize things and put things in perspective uh i i I find that it's really great to listen to this in-depth interview it's not that you want to trivialize your fears or your troubles but it does just you're suddenly just zooming up and looking at humanity and looking at the future and just looking at things in a much on a much grander scale and for me that always helps me realize that I'm here for just a second in the, in the grand scheme of things. And uh, uh, there was also a question about my favorite podcasts. I've said this before, but I do listen to uh, Sam Harris's Making Sense podcast quite frequently, almost every night, I would say, uh, or when I go for long walks. He is a neuroscientist, philosopher, and author, American, and he, ah, it just never fails to inspire me. I don't always agree with everything that he says, but I don't think that should be the prerequisite for choosing a podcast or anyone that you, that use work, you, you view. Um, uh, he, the issues are uh, covering humanity, and I find that if I'm feeling uh, overwhelmed or anxious or anything, uh, it is so important for me, or at least it's it, it it's very useful for me to just take an hour and get deep into one of these interviews where uh, it's covering issues that are not concerning me, my family, my home, uh, my culture. It's not just reflecting my little world. It's, it's looking a bit bigger at issues that pertain to all of us that concern humanity, that concern our future. Uh, and I just find it so scintillating. I am completely thrilled by uh, the places that he takes my mind on on, the, on these interviews. And, and I think it's, you know, because that there is... For example, I was listening to uh, an interview with the Nobel Prize winning psychologist Daniel Kahneman on uh, cognitive bias and, and decision making and things like this. And then there is like an astrophysicist, Neil uh, deGrasse Tyson, and then he'll uh, have, for example, an Anglo-Irish poet, David White, speaking about time and, and values and, and things. And then there's Richard Dawkins, uh, who's a... Uh, um, uh, just an award-winning uh, evolutionary biologist, and 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 they're talking about uh, the the future of of AI, of artificial intelligence. Uh, then sometimes there's someone that I've never heard of before, like uh, this woman um, Yasmin Mohammed, who is an activist, and uh, she escaped uh, a uh, forced uh, marriage with this radical Islamic. A member of the Al, Al Qaeda, it's bigger issues, and it's reminding me not of that platitude. Okay, there are so many people worse off than you, which is true, but it doesn't necessarily just help in the way that uh, perspective. Perspective, I think, is what uh, is is the the key to easing anxiety. It's really about engaging your brain. I feel like, at least for me, I need to be engaged in this debate or engaged by a debate between two other people who are far more articulate than I am. And I think that's the other thing is the caliber of interviewees. We have now become so accustomed to these overnight gurus who are life coaches or someone 
who purports to be able to change your life and is usually sort of selling something. And it's not that academics don't have an agenda. Obviously, they do. And the point is that, you know, these these people are scientists and and, and psychologists and uh, and uh, and academics who have devoted decades to cultivating or developing a theory. And it's not like these just overnight people you see on Instagram who are just, uh, I feel like maybe they have a genuine passion for a subject, but there's a difference between having a passion and really truly devoting decades and, and, and research and and thought. And, 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 uh, and these are certified experts. And I think we need in this day and age to, to sort of retain a bit of reverence for those who have that traditional knowledge and that traditional experience and opinion and it's a it's a you know an opinion that they can substantiate with more than just some sort of emotional rash ill-conceived idea that happens to have the most likes of the day on 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 social media i i would love to see more of a return to uh, traditional experts in in different fields, at least uh, not putting anyone up on a pedestal and saying, "Okay, you're a doctor, you're a scientist, so your word is is God." No, but at least to have someone who's who's is taken a theory and an, or an opinion, and they've they've invested time and 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 research into it, and and uh, and it's just not such a, a superficial opinion that is just between two people. Uh, arguing like children on uh, on uh, in the comment section of a, of a of a YouTube video. If in a day maybe you feel like you've accomplished nothing, or you feel like things have gone downhill, you've you've not only accomplished nothing, but you've actually made things worse. You've fought with a family member or your spouse, or you've got troubles at work, but or you've whatever you you've got problems with your your body, your health. But if you have expanded your mind. Uh, in a way, if you've asked questions that that you you didn't ask yourself when you the day before, I think that is a good day and that is worthy and it's something that can make you feel that you are growing. David and Renata asked, uh, "What is happening with the other renovation, uh, the one with the the restaurant cafe attached?" Thank you so much for your patience. I'm sorry. I have been pestering Guido about this for over a year, saying, come on, you have to get back to people. I'll let him explain. It's yes. been a long time that people have been writing to know if the villa that we made the video on is still available to rent. What happened with that? Yeah, last summer uh, there was sort of mismatch with the... Uh, the person that was using it the years before so let's say it wasn't on the market but this uh, summer this season if someone is interested in in renting it we are it's available and and that's now without the restaurant because the, the, the restaurant also the restaurant is being held up with uh, contractual uh, matters with the tenant so that's why it went on a stall and also the small house next to the restaurant is still delayed. It's yeah. delayed because the the firm that has been doing the works on the villa uh, is stuck with all the works with that are going on in Italy now building work so it's also that is is stuck and so the only thing that would be available would be the villa for this season for this season, in, in, where you mean like spring and or summer? This, this year, this, oh, right. like this this solar year. And but let's say not having heating, it's spring to September. Yeah, but the roof is completely finished. Yeah, yeah, the place, roof is so completely finished. It's not leaking. The house is furnished, so everything works. And as I said, there's no heating, so it's not usable during cold months. But from May to September, I would say. And it has how many bedrooms? I can't remember. I can't remember either. Maybe eight? Eight, something yeah. like that, yeah. yeah. Okay, and so people should email you on that? Yeah, that, yeah. That email uh, address? I, some, I know that some people wrote to me on that email and I haven't answered to anyone. Sorry, so no one should feel offended because actually I never answered to anyone because of all these matters that will, were holding us back on both the restaurant and the small 
cottage next to the restaurant. Yeah. Okay. And so what's the minimum that people could rent it for? Depends what they want to do with it. Oh. Let's, yeah, let's see. Let's see what. Okay. But what, not for like a weekend. That wouldn't be worth no, our no, time. No, no, so no. It wouldn't it be worth. Be like... I think it's something. We are, not, we are not, let's say in this moment, organized for doing short term rents. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's for sure. Uh, it would probably the best thing would be someone that wants to come for at least two weeks or, or a month yeah. or actually all the season and then if they want to sublet have friends or yeah. pull up with other friends and have a house in Tuscany for for the season that would be probably the optimal option okay Great. And it's in Tuscany. We're not saying exactly where it is, just for security reasons. But once people email you, you could yeah, yeah, yeah. then it, it's them and then get to know. Yeah, yeah, it's close to everything, so it's a strategic strategic position. Yeah, but it's not actual quite central. It's not like super close to Florence. Yeah, but it's it's forty five minutes from Siena, forty five okay. an hour from Florence. Okay, close another forty five minutes to Arezzo. So, yeah, it's quite... Okay. It's not far. Va bene. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Grazie. Ciao, ciao. We've got to hurry up and do this question before the next feed uh, for Gianfranco. So, uh, I remember one of the questions was, uh, Kylie, did you ever expect that this is how your life would end up? Did you have any idea that this is uh, what it would, would be? I feel incredibly grateful and... and uh, and uh, uh, hyper aware of all the good fortune I have. However, I, I this this is where I always imagined myself being uh, emotionally and geographically, and uh, and uh, so and professionally, I suppose. I've encountered people for whom success or love or uh, their, this, the country they live in, the city they live in, uh, their lifestyle is, is some just wild, fortuitous event. It's something that has happened to them. And I've never really felt like that, for better or for worse, because sometimes it's felt like a hard slog because I've just always felt that everything I have uh, uh, have in my life, I've had to really work hard at uh, but I also feel that on the other hand it, it, it's quite empowering because it makes you realize if you if you feel that that uh, a lot of the things and people and and uh, opportunities that you have in your life uh, are come after a, a long wait and a lot of a lot of work and a lot of uh, pivoting and and reevaluating and 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 re-educating yourself uh, then it, it, it sort of, uh, it empowers you because you think, okay, so then if I want something else or if I want to get uh, over here, I know that I just have to do that work and be as patient as I was uh, in, in, in the past because that precedent's been set. And, and sometimes I think if you were to have some lucky thing happen to you, that's great, but it doesn't really uh, fill you with the... the uh, the feeling that you could replicate it, that you could have another lucky thing happen to you. Does that make sense? It would probably sound more exciting uh, to say, oh, I never dreamed I would be here. I never dreamed I would be living in, in Tuscany and call this place my home and, and, and have a, a husband like Guido. And, but, I, but I did. I, I, I always thought that was in reach. And, and uh, I, just, I just knew that I... I couldn't be in control of the timeline. I couldn't be in control of when it happened. I just had to keep working and not give up hope and uh, try different approaches with my career uh, so that when things were really uh, seeming to, to, to collapse and, and, and go nowhere, uh, I, I just had to keep pivoting and, and reinventing myself and trying new ways to express my creativity and Many of you wrote to me about the very difficult experience of waiting for love and any time I have felt impatient or lonely or worried about my biological clock, I thought 
All I can do is use this time to work on myself so that when the right relationship comes along, I have maximum emotional intelligence and financial independence and healthy self-esteem and confidence in knowing how to make myself happy and clarity with my career so that I can give the relationship the highest chance of success. It wasn't, it was not like my, my hope didn't waver. <laughs> I certainly had times where I thought, oh my gosh, this is taking so long. And, but I, in terms of knowing where I wanted to be and what I wanted to be doing, yeah, I, I had acute clarity on that from when I was very young. My life here, just in the countryside, uh, working alone, uh, not being very well known uh, in my industry at all. Uh, however, uh, just being able to uh, make an income to support my family and uh, have uh, enough uh, flexibility and independence to be able to, to be creative and do what I want, it's, it, that is, it, it's not this grand success. Uh, but for me, it's definitely what I that was the dream for me the dream was to be creatively independent and to be able to support a family and to be able to work at home and I remember being 18 and not wanting to have children at that point but knowing I thought I need to uh, create a, a, a work environment or a career that enables me to be at home uh, so that I can be present for my children the way my mother was present and my mother worked part-time as well so she wasn't she is just a superwoman I don't know uh, how she did it but she was always there in the afternoons uh, baking us biscuits and having delicious you know afternoon teas and chats after school and if we had troubles she was just always there and making beautiful birthday parties and spending weekends with us my father spending every night every night every dinner and every weekend with us and and uh, and I really wanted to create a life where I could be present for children in that way and and even though I was sort of 18 and full of just wanderlust and, and excited to see the world and by no means wanting to settle down I, I kept finding myself in my 20s in relationships with uh, men who were just really wanting to settle down and, and I and I would have I think if it were the right person but I just I didn't feel that all all jobs these days have risk honestly the YouTube algorithm could decide that I'm just it's not going to show you any of my content and or something new might come along or you might all get bored of of what I'm showing you that could absolutely and probably inevitably will happen uh, at some stage however uh, comparatively when I look at like working for a corporate uh, particularly when I was working in print that was so tenuous just the the future of print was was uh, was not a sure thing, and so I, I I thought, okay, I need to move into into video so that I can be at home and 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 be able to be creative and be uh, a present parent, and uh, and then in in terms of living in Italy, I just I just knew I I I knew I was always I think I always knew I was going to live in Europe. I hadn't sort of defined it between France, Spain, and Italy, and uh, and then I, I mean, anyone would have been okay by me because they all have that Mediterranean lifestyle that really just speaks to my soul. Uh, however, I, 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 as sort of soon as I, I set foot in Italy, I, I just knew and. You are such an incredible traveller and storyteller. Has your wanderlust subsided since settling into this new phase of life? What are some of your bucket list countries to visit? And 121 of you uh, liked that question and wanted it answered. Uh, no, my wanderlust hasn't subsided, uh, but the reason I haven't done as much content overseas is that I met Guido at the start of COVID and we went into lockdown together. <laughs> that was basically our first sort of dating experience was in lockdown together. And uh, in Italy, uh, it was just really uh, strict, as, as you probably know. And then even once the things lightened up and we, you were allowed to travel, so many of our friends and family ended up being caught in places. So they would go just for a trip to London even, or uh, somewhere in, in Europe, and then they would get stuck in that country. And it was really, difficult because you had to find your own accommodation and you weren't allowed to get to quarantine and and I just thought gosh this is going to be so 
difficult with uh, my work if I you know, if I got stuck somewhere and was stuck for a month or something it means I'd have to take all my equipment and we, so we just traveled domestically uh, to you know Portofino and Sicily and I filmed all there and Trentino in the in the north of Italy then I got pregnant and we didn't want to risk anything then uh, because just I had to be near my the doctors in uh, in Italy because I had placenta previa so uh, I was sort of grounded in Italy for that reason and uh, yeah and so it's it hasn't really been a choice it's sort of just been the circumstances also do you know what I tried last year uh, just doing those little short travel pieces that were around Tuscany and interviewing people because I much prefer to interview someone and have be behind the camera and and I think it's much more interesting than seeing me talk and waffle on just to, to, to have a conversation with a local and really let them lead the discussion and let them uh, teach the audience something about their way of life. It's it's far more uh, captivating, in my opinion, than, than me and my life here. But they didn't do as well as the content that was filmed here in my home. Or The thing is, the response to those videos was incredible. The people who did see it loved them and said, oh, I, this is amazing and I, you know, can't wait to see more. But it didn't, in terms of on YouTube, it didn't uh, do so well, uh, not nearly as well as the, the renovation uh, ones. Uh, I have noticed with my content that, for example, I will go to so much trouble to make what I feel is quite a dynamic episode with uh, interviews and food and travel and, and, and less of me and more of the people in the country I'm, I'm visiting. They're not as popular as if I'm just at home, uh, just having a chat to camera or seeing aspects of my life. Renovations and relationships and things like that, it's, 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 a, it's something we all have in common, isn't it? I mean, anyone, wherever you're living, you can do up whatever space you're in. If you're just renting a single bedroom, you can still uh, make something of it. And I wonder whether people find that quite, uh, quite encouraging or quite uh, engaging because it means they can take it into their own home. Whereas if I, you know, I did a, uh, I've done road trips all throughout different crazy countries or gone on you know, two week hikes in, in Peru in the, in the mountains and, and perhaps if someone feels, oh, I would never do that. Although you wonder because uh, originally that was what travel content was. It was escapism and you watch something almost specifically because it's an experience you may not be able to to live. It's a curious thing. I mean, I have spent a lot of time and money and just so many hours editing and finding music that fits the right, uh, that fits the culture. And uh, and the, the travel episodes are so, so uh, much more difficult and expensive for me to make. For example, I've, I've, I went to a lot of trouble for an episode on Turkey, which I think is, is quite good. It's, it's more looking at the food and talking to the people and, and covering the country and, 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 uh, and, and, and even, you know, also with Iran, like discussing some of the, the history of Persia and, and, and just really facing the camera out and, and looking out and, and, and exploring. It's hard to film on the road and I've done it for so many years, uh, but doing it, filming all alone, I mean, Guido doesn't have the uh, desire to, to be behind the camera at all, uh, which is fine. I, I really love being behind the camera. I love telling that story and being the, and, and doing the editing. I love, I love trying to encapsulate a whole city or town or, or culture uh, in, in, in 20, 20 or 30 minutes. And, and I guess it's, there's no need to sort of choose. <laughs> I don't, I, I've always uh, endeavored to do both because I like both. I like, I'm both uh, uh, an explorer and a, uh, a great lover of, of foreign cultures, but I'm also a homebody and a home cook. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. It's so beautiful. Oh, my God. Wow. I'm also very grateful to you and the work that you do because you kept me company during the darkest phase of my life and have been so very inspiring in the most spectacular way. Your videos are a visual delight and I look forward to them every weekend.
Thank you to those who have sent so many thoughtful packages and letters and cards from around the world. This was from a viewer in India. Uh, others came from Hong Kong, California, Hungary, Washington, Austria, Australia. A little necklace with our names, Kylie, Guido and Gianfranco, engraved on it. Uh, this incredible book sent from the author and uh, my whole family unwrapped them and we just admired every detail. Mm. Uh, nice therapy man so that? i'm the it's therapy for me or i am the therapy for other people <laughs> i filmed a very long answer to someone's question on tips for becoming fluent in a foreign language and then i decided i'll make a whole video on that topic because i have a lot to say on the matter but thank you to everyone who has sent questions thank you for watching and i hope to see you next week a la prossima. As I roll the names of these generous viewers who donate to my channel on Patreon, I want to share with you this magnificent male choir that I heard in a church in Trentino. I think that many of you might get emotional like I was. I just stood there with Gianfranco wrapped up in my arms and tears running down my cheeks. It is so moving and I hope you'll stay to the end to listen and uh, perhaps you'll feel the same way I did.